Welcome to Focus on Faith, the program that brings you portraits of faith from across the nation. Join us as we bring you the faith of men and women from all walks of life who truly represent the spirit of America as we focus on faith. Greetings and welcome to Focus on Faith. I'm Cindy Anderson, bringing you a worldwide fellowship of Christians in action. On June 21, 1788, the Constitution became the official framework of the government of the United States of America and has remained the guiding foundation of our country ever since. Now our country is experiencing one of the deepest divides in its history. And given these difficult days, we thought it was important to publish the following Focus on Faith interview with the Honorable Senator Mark Hatfield of Oregon. Mark Hatfield's career in public office spanned five decades. He held office in both the legislative and executive branches of Oregon state government, including two terms as governor. On the national stage, he became the longest serving U.S. Senator from Oregon. Now, first elected to the United States Senate in 1966, Mark Hatfield, a liberal Republican, is said to have legislated to the beat of his own drum during his three decades of Senate service. Senator Hatfield often placed conscience before partisanship and remained steadfast in his views, earning him both admiration and criticism from his colleagues. Shaped by his military service during World War II and his Christian faith, Hatfield never approved a military authorization bill from Vietnam to the Persian Gulf War of 1991. In 1971, he co-sponsored an amendment calling for the withdrawal of all U.S. troops from Vietnam, citing, quote, the deaths of non-combatant men, women, and children. He said the American bombing campaign, quote, merits the general condemnation of mankind. He's best known for his role as chairman of the Appropriations Committee, where in 1995, he cast the lone Republican nay vote on a GOP-supported balanced budget amendment, which ultimately fell one vote short of passage. Senator Hatfield passed away in 2011 at the age of 89. Now, since our visit, literally multitudes of people, young and old, have seen this timeless testimony through public service programming and cable networks. And now it's available through Telemissions International's new Life's Lighthouse series of programs. We hope you enjoy this video, and if you like this series, then please leave a thumbs up. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and share these timeless testimonies. Hey, check out the entire series of Focus on Faith by clicking the link below. And thank you for watching. Another example of classic architecture, the Jefferson Memorial. Thomas Jefferson, statesman, farmer, political and social philosopher, minister to France, inventor, architect, scholar, secretary of state, 
vice president. President. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Jefferson's greatest achievement, the Declaration of Independence, our guarantee of freedom. Our guarantee of freedom. The monuments and buildings begin to take on a meaning. A meaning that does not only belong to the past, but to the present and the future. The meaning behind the monuments. Uh, may I ask personally, Senator Hatfield, is it difficult to function as a Christian within American government today? Well, I don't think it's any more difficult in one sense than trying to be a used car salesman or uh, any of these other areas of life where people generally have a rather low esteem. You know, politicians only rank next to low <laughs> used car salesmen. Uh, I think that basically uh, the thing that I face in government and politics is the ego. Mm -hmm. The problem of ego, because it is an ego-centered profession, and uh, so oftentimes when we talk about being a Christian in politics, Christians will say, does that mean you have to drink and you have to smoke and you have to go in the back room with all the smoke uh, and make decisions there? They, they think of politics uh, in that sense. It's not the social practices that are difficult to handle. That can be handled in any situation. But I think really it's to keep the fact that in an ego-centered profession that it is Christ and not ego that we are seeking to exemplify and to serve. And that's my greatest difficulty. Well, that would lead to this point, then. Is a Christian legislator an oddity in American government today? I think not. I think that there, it's a question of whether a Christian is willing to stand out and stand forth uh, rather than to blend with the environment and to be camouflaged in the culture. Uh, if you're willing to take the stand as Christ leads you to do, then it might be an oddity. But would he not also be an oddity in business or in the professions or in the vocations? I think we are called and to be set apart, not to be separated or isolated, but by our lifestyle, we are to be distinctive mm -hmm. as Christians wherever we are. So whether it's in politics or business or the home or school, if we're living the truly the Christian life, following Christ, uh, we are going to be oddities. So many young people have asked me, Senator Mark Hatfield, do you really believe a Christian could be elected president of the United States? Well. The assumption in that question is that we've never had a Christian as president of the United States, and I think we have had. And I Amen. think that it's possible not only to be elected, but to uh, be an effective president. Well, if so, what effect would it have on our country? Uh, can it be led on Christian-centered principles, or is certain compromise to be accepted? I think compromise is legitimate in when it is in matters of procedure, in timing. Uh, in wording, but not in ter terms of the principle involved. Once we start compromising principle, uh, then the erosion has really set in that is very difficult to reverse. I believe that it is possible to uh, govern, to do anything with a set of principles based upon the teachings of Christ. Uh, our revolution had many elements there again, and I don't speak of the War of 1776, no. that wasn't the revolution. The revolution, the war had nothing to do with the revolution. As John Adams said, the war was but the consequence of the revolution. Because as John Adams pointed out, the revolution really began in the hearts and the minds of the, of the citizens when they, uh, they allied themselves with new religious sentiments. That's yes. what Adams said. So that is revolutionary. All right, if we, can, if we can bring forth a nation with those principles and those values, certainly then we can govern a nation with those same principles and values. Now, personally, on the basis of what you've said and you enunciate so clearly, Senator Hatfield, your Christian principles and convictions, and certainly the hallmark of Senator Hatfield has been that dedication that emanates so effectively from you. I say that most sincerely and candidly. But praise the, the Lord. Uh, let's we give the Lord the Lord. credit then. Amen. All right. All right. But on the basis of that, Senator, have you ever felt your Christian faith has been a deterrent within the conformities of government practices today? Not within the conformity of government practices, but within the fellowship of Christian believers. 
I have found the most difficult part of my political life has not been with fellow politicians, but with fellow believers. Is that a fact? Where people of Christian commitment, and I certainly would not ever judge their sincerity in any way, but have used a political question or a political controversial issue as a judgment on my own commitment to Christ. Mm -hmm. And that has created problems in fellowship. And this particularly was true during the Vietnam War when I took a very strong position very early against the war. And many of my fellow Christians said, you can't be a Christian and not be a supporter of President Nixon or of the war or President Johnson. And those were the problems that I faced more than any other problem that I've ever had in political life. Uh, I do not believe that we are ever to be an instrument of divisiveness in the Christian community. And I had to take a hard look at whether I should stay in politics if I became that kind of a divisive instrument. So that was my most difficult time in political life. Senator Hatfield, we most certainly commend you for your stance. We are wholeheartedly in agreement with your position. Truly, we want freedom to ring throughout our land, and we know that's the cry of your own heart in every area. In conclusion, Senator Hatfield, focus on faith, name of our program, a brief, succinct, statement, if you would please, to our massive audience out there, the crystallization of your faith in God. May we have that? I think that if man is to live a meaningful per life, any person is to li uh, live a meaningful life, he has to get the dimension and perspective of who he is and why he is. Mm -hmm. And that is defined in the story of creation, in the scripture, and in the redemption of man by Christ. Therefore, my life, when I made my commitment to Christ, it was to really discover myself. The second thing is, then we must go about using the instrumentality that Christ has called us to use, love. That's the most potent, powerful instrument in the world. And uh, I, therefore, my faith uh, is in Christ, Jesus, as Lord and Savior. My life, I hope, is lived out through his love not only by his power of love, but by my relationship to all other people, because my relationship to Christ should be affirmed by my relationship to other people. Well, that's positive. That's personal. Senator Hatfield, quickly, in conclusion, do you have a favorite Bible verse? First uh, Corinthians 4.20, which I think is a politician's verse. And that is, the kingdom of God is not a matter of words, but a thing of power. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Mark Hatfield, we've been delighted to have you on our program Focus on Faith, and here at the convention, we join together in wishing you God's richest blessing upon the remaining years of your career. May you long be with us, and may God's richest benediction abide upon your life and your family. Thank you, Senator Mark Hatfield. Thank you, Dr. Anderson. Thank you for joining us today with our sincere hope that you have been blessed and encouraged with this Focus on Faith timeless testimony. Now, if you want to see more of these unique videos, then please don't forget to leave a thumbs up. And of course, don't forget to subscribe in order to never again miss any of the upcoming Timeless Testimonies. By you simply caring and sharing this unique series of programs with others, you can greatly help our channel to reach multitudes for Christ. Now, to quote Reverend Dr. Charles Swindoll says, no persuasive technique will ever take the place of a personal testimony. If you have not discovered the value of telling others how God can rearrange your life, you missed a vital link in the chain of His plan for reaching the lost." End of quote. So come on, let's get excited by helping this channel spread the good news. Now in closing, today's timeless testimony may have impacted someone out there, and God is speaking to you right now, and that person wants to commit their life to follow Christ. Friend, I would encourage you to start by reading your Bible and to begin to practice what the Bible says. And I pray that you will get strong in the desire to go out and find a good Bible teaching church to join and to not let yourself get distracted, please. But rather, you will make this a priority in your life to seek God's will for a new life in Christ. Now, if you want to know more about having a more abundant and fulfilling life, then this booklet I'm holding right here, Beginning with Christ, by Navigators International is a great way to get started, and I want to send this to you absolutely free. If you'll simply email us at info at and request this free booklet there. And if you have a specific prayer request, let us know. We will include your request in our daily prayer time. 
Now, for those of you who would like to know more about Telemissions International and how this unique ministry got started, just visit our website. That's telemissions.org. And don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment on our website, and tell your friends about this new and exciting series of programs. We all know the power of a personal testimony in this and many more classic testimonies like this. We'll we'll continue to spread the light, helping others around the world through God's lighthouse. That's right, God's lighthouse. And this picture of the lighthouse you see here behind me on the stormy shores of the Outer Banks is our hallmark, signifying the importance of Telemissions International's ministry reaching out to multitudes for Christ. Now, just think of it, every timeless testimony that is being broadcast is like a beacon of light, beaming out the good news on the stormy shores of cyberspace, as I like to call it, and it'll go on for decades to come. So please, won't you consider sharing it on Facebook or Twitter, or whatever you can do to help spread that light. Now, thanks again for joining us today. This is Dr. Gordon Anderson, Jr., And I want to share with you our prayer promise, and that is Psalm 121, verse 2. And that says, My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And please remember to start every day in prayer. Now God's richest blessing as you focus your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. I think that if man is to live a meaningful life, any person is to uh, live a meaningful life, He has to get the dimension and perspective of who he is and why he is. And that is defined in the story of creation, in the scripture, and in the redemption of man by Christ. Therefore, my life, when I made my commitment to Christ, it was to really discover myself. The second thing is, then we must go about using the instrumentality that Christ has called us to use, love. That's the most potent, powerful instrument in the world. And uh, therefore, my faith uh, is in Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. My life, I hope, is lived out through his love, not only by his power of love, but by my relationship to all other people, because my relationship to Christ should be affirmed by my relationship to other people.